to third. Farhat will make the play to second for one. Williams the relay in time. The Cavs turn the double. 3-2 pitch, swung at one in his eyes. Williams, the dive from the knees, gets it to pick. A little flare out into center field. Go ahead, run it first. Up the middle, knocked down, shortstop slip is too high and get made it to the orange cutout. Up the middle for a base hit. Williams will trot home, and the Cavaliers take the lead on. To short, good high hopper for Barrera. The throw across took a little off that one. Padukowicz making the tag. We're just stepping on the bag now as Eskel jammed on the brakes to retire the side, and the Cavaliers get a come from behind Victor over to shortstop, while Kahi Hirano bats ninth and plays second base. Line right into the glove of Trevor Huddleston. Looky what I found. Thank you so much. Towards right center, racing back Stordahl. He's not going to get to it, and the Cavaliers will pull off the come from behind win. It's a double for Crosby, and they're sprinting out after him as the Cavs come back in both ends of the doubleheader. A double and two RBIs, four runs in the inning. You got to feel sorry for St. Martin's with the struggles that they've had this year. But the Cavaliers need a little bit of zip themselves and they complete the four game sweep as the coaches shake hands. Four runs in the seventh inning. When they too many fingers on the buttons. Uh, you, you said the big rip there. Um, I've not heard such a sustained amount of noise from the Cavalier dugout this year, but you guys had to have a little bit of feeling there with three wins in three games that you could pull it off in the seventh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh our approach going into the weekend was we want to sweep. Uh, that was at the forefront of our mind from game one. And uh, noise in the dugout has been something we've been preaching all year long. Uh, at times it's been a little up and down. Um, but it was good to see our guys all get on board right there in that last inning. Everyone's talking. Everyone's chirping. And first couple guys come up and get on base, and then that just gets the ball rolling. And uh, that's what we've been looking for all year, honestly. I mean, you're supposed to pick on guys that are lower than you are in the standings, but emotionally, this is a big lift for this ball club at a time when you need it at the yeah, most. Yeah, I mean, we're close with NNU right now. We knew we were close with NNU right now, and really this conference, the way it works is winning in the back half is all that matters, right? I mean, you got to come up and win big games in the last half of the season here, and this was that turning point for us, and so hopefully we can keep that momentum rolling into the uh, second half of these games here. Right now, you're actually ahead of NNU. They lost in 14 to Western Oregon in the first game of their doubleheader, so uh, for the time being. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit more about your at-bat. Mm -hmm. You're down to your last strike. You're one and two. Do you change your approach at the plate? Did you change your attack any? What, what did you look for? What did you try to do? Yeah, so, I mean, coming into the at-bat, I'm thinking this guy's got a little more velo than some of the guys that had going the rest of the game, so I'm thinking look for something straight. Uh, I got something straight for a strike, so then I'm thinking he's going to throw me a bender, and he does, and I'm way out in front. That's the one I foul into the dugout, and then my approach is just a two-strike approach, fastball away and adjust. That's all I'm thinking is he's going to go fastball away. I'm either going to pepper it to the left side, or he's going to flip me a breaker, and I'm going to pull it. And, uh, he flipped me a breaker. He left it a little bit up, and <clears throat> I was just trying to poke it somewhere, not trying to do too much with anything there. Yeah, it was a little bit more than a poke, yeah. though. <laughs> as soon as you see the arc of it, you know that you've wrapped it up, so... Mm -hmm. uh, what do you guys take from this? You know, obviously this extended home stretch helps out as well. But now, right again, a big series against Central Washington. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think first and foremost, we're healthy. Uh, that's, a, that's a big thing for us going into the second half of the year. We've got most of our guys who are fully functioning, which is good. And secondly, uh, just this momentum. You know, we've, been, we've scraped a few wins here and there in these series, but now we're coming off a four-game sweep. 
We're, we know that we can win. You know, we know we come into ball games expecting to win at this point in the season, and so I think taking that forward against some of these other teams in our conference will be big for us. Well, great outing today, getting all four wins. We'll look forward to seeing you again next weekend. All right, thank, thank you. you for your time. We'll go ahead and bring Rob Vance in here. So we have to do a little. Yep, you got it. Yep, we're not that rich. We don't have that many of them. So we'll bring. Thank you, Cole. We'll bring Coach uh, Rob Vance in with us now, as uh, his team gets. The first four-game sweep of a series, and that's a crucial one as well. I mean, you do what you're supposed to do uh, against the team lowering the standings at home and everything else. But as we all know, that doesn't always happen in this game, and so it's got to be a whole lot of pride not only to get those four games, but to really come back from the depths in the seventh and pull this one out. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, we played really well the last couple of weekends, and Cole said, it, you know, we got a couple of wins here and there, and we... We didn't get the big hit in a couple of those games. Um, <clears throat> this, I think, gives us some really good momentum to one more nice weekend at home than on the road for one or two or something like that. I don't know what it is, but it's hard to beat somebody four times. It really yeah. is, yeah. Um, especially when we do it over the two-day span. So I think the guys are really feeling pretty good right now. They didn't get down, which I told them afterwards. I said, you know, you got to get 21 or 27 outs. and. We've been on the other end of it on both sides. But this was a different team today in the seventh inning than had that team been in the same situation earlier in the year. The energy was there. The emotion was there. The belief was there. Oh, I completely agree. I think we've told them all along that when we do things the right way, we're a pretty good club. Um, and we've just had a few mistakes here and there that cost us some games. You know, we had the one inning today, which... We'll talk about that one this week. But, yeah, they kept the energy up. I think they kept the belief that we could get these guys. Um, you know, it helps when they put a couple of guys on base via the walk. Yeah. Um, but we talk about it on the other side is that, you know, with our pitching staff, you know, I think we've had more success the last three or four weeks because we're not walking as many guys. So I, I think we're feeling good moving forward. Cole said it best, too. You know, our injuries are very, very minor. Um, and so hopefully we can get a couple of days off this week and get some guys back a little bit healthier for the next weekend. You also got to come from behind win in game one, due in large part to great outings from your bullpen. Uh, those guys have been pr pretty good. You know, Wilmon was good today. Diaz was good yesterday. He wasn't as sharp today, but, you know, he's a young guy. I'm one of those kind of things, and he's going to have a little bit of an up and down. But uh, pitching staff has been really good the last... Gosh, three, four weeks. Marriott got the win in the first, had a chance at the win in the second, but just in case of running out of gas, how hard is it to cycle back up for a second game like that? You know, I spent, especially early in the year, I think it's tough. Um, we don't like doing that very much, but, you, you know, you got to do what you got to do in conference play. Um, hopefully, again, during the week we can get those guys a little bit of rest and so that they'll be ready. And, you know, we'll learn some things about our pitching staff as we move forward about what we can and can't do with certain guys. I'm sure you've probably heard by now Northwest Nazarene losing the first game at Western Oregon in 14 innings. So that kind of gives you guys a little bit more control of your situation with an eye toward making the conference tournament. You know, I, I mean, our focus right now, I'm sure some of the boys are looking at it a little bit. I mean, mine is to get a couple of days off, and then we'll get ready for next weekend here, which I believe is central again. Yeah, talk a little bit about the Wildcats. Um, they've been playing pretty well as of late. Um, they're a different team away from home, as are almost everybody in our conference. And, you know, playing with our park here, we've got a little bit more of an advantage. Their place of ball really flies. Um, but it'll be a good series. Um, you know, we got one from them last time when we were over there. I think we've got a good chance to have a good weekend. Yeah, always nice when you're doing it at home, getting to play your own style in your own park. Yes, so. it is. Rob, thanks for the time. Congratulations to come from behind wins today as the Cavaliers take all four games from the St. Martin's Saints, and we'll look forward to visiting with you again next weekend. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Cavaliers come from behind 5-3 to three in game one and come up with four runs in the bottom of the seventh to make it a sweep 8-7 to seven over St. Martins. As we mentioned, it'll be Central Washington next. We'll have double headers for you Saturday starting at...